Okay, so time is tight, and that means that I know I said I would make a follow-up video about the Fio R7 streaming DAC with the touchscreen. But because time is tight, and because so many of you requested that I take a look at the Eversolo DMP A6, thank you to everybody who left a comment about that actually, because I've never seen so many comments requesting that I take a look at a piece of gear as I did with the Eversolo. So I went back to Eversolo after first declining the review unit and saying, can I have a review unit after all? And they said, yeah, we'll send you one. So I guess today, what I'm gonna try and do is cover off a little bit of follow-up on the Fio R7 as we take a fairly significant look at the Eversolo DMP A6. This video is brought to you by Rune 2.0 the revolutionary music player designed for true music fanatics. Click to runelabs.com for more information. Welcome back everybody. Yes, today we are going to conduct the mother of all side-by-side -side comparisons between the Fio R7 and the Eversolo DMP A6. I guess DMP stands for Digital Media Player. Now, why am I comparing these two? Well, they're both touchscreen based streaming DACs and they both sell for similar money. So the Eversolo sells for, I think, 859 euros, and the Fio for 699 euros. Now let's tackle one obvious difference right out of the gate. The Fio has a five inch touchscreen, but it's oriented like a smartphone, so in portrait mode. But the Eversolo has a six inch touchscreen, but that's oriented in what I would call ultra wide landscape mode. But what's not so obvious is that the Eversolo screen is much higher resolution than the Fios. Now streaming DAC means stream comes in, analog goes out. So that means the analog goes out to a pair of powered loudspeakers or a preamp or an integrated amplifier, basically into the rest of your playback system. And the Eversolo, like the Fios, supports out of the box, Rune Ready, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, and Apple AirPlay 2 as well as some, I guess we would call them native streaming apps, but we'll come back to that later. Just a little sidebar about AirPlay 2 here because the Eversolo does something that I've not seen before in that it confirms that it is receiving an AAC stream from my iPhone when streaming using AirPlay 2. So that for me almost confirms the fact that Apple AirPlay version two, version two, not version one, version two is lossy when being fed by, I guess, I think it's just iOS devices, but I could be wrong. It might be iPad OS as well. I don't think it's Mac OS. It's definitely not Rune. So what I'm saying is, is that there's been talk for a while or rumbling for a while that Apple AirPlay 2 is lossy. And I think it is in some cases and the Eversolo seems to confirm as much. Now on the back panel, the Eversolo has single-ended RCA outputs and balanced XLR outputs, just like the Fio. And in the software, we can set them to be line out or preamp out, so variable volume control, again, just like the Fio. So with its volume knob on the front panel, the Eversolo can be deployed as essentially an analog outputting DAC slash preamplifier. Again, just like the Fio, although obviously, Obviously, the Eversolo's volume knob is larger than the Fio's, and I think it feels a bit more satisfying to turn. So yeah, the Eversolo has the more satisfying knob feel. However, the Fio counters a little bit in that it has two sets of single-ended RCA outputs on the back. Now, the DAC circuits in these two units are very different. So inside the Fio, we get a DAC circuit built around a single ESS 9068AS chip. And I must emphasize built around because obviously it's all of the stuff around the chip that makes the sound of this DAC circuit. Whereas Eversolo, I think, 
have stepped it up a little bit. They've gone for two DAC chips and they're using the ESS 9038Q2M. And if we want to access the Eversolo's internal DAC from an external device, on the back we get inputs for Toslink, coax and USB just like the FIO. However, it would be remiss of me not to mention something that I've subsequently learnt about the, the FIO's USB input in that sometimes, and it is sometimes, it's not always, I don't even know why, we get lip sync lag when using the, the FIO as our sound decoder when watching TV. And we should also point out that the HDMI socket on the back of the Eversolo, it's not an HDMI eARC or ARC input. It's not even an I squared S input or output. It's an output actually, and it's strictly for sending out multi-channel PCM and DSD. Now I don't deal in multi-channel, so I didn't test this at all. For normal people, the Eversolo gives us two digital outputs, coax and Toslink, just like the FIO. However, the FIO's digital output is fixed in terms of volume level, but the Eversolo's isn't. So that means the Eversolo can be used in tandem with a Peachtree Audio GAN 1. And I'll link to that video in case you want to know what I'm talking about there in the description box below. And now we begin to see where these two streaming DACs begin to diverge more significantly because there is no headphone output on the Eversolo, not at all. So if we want to do headphone listening with the DMP A6, we have to add our own external headphone amplifier. Whereas inside the FIO, we find a THX AAA headphone amplifier, which gives us up to 3.6 watts of output power, which is that's pretty intense. And it also gives us two balanced outputs and a single ended output. So for headphoneistas, I think really the FIO is the only way to go here if you want an all-in-one unit. But if your interest lies with local storage of music files, the FIO has an SD card slot on the back. So that's where we would load in our own files. Whereas the Eversolo, yes, it has a USB input on the back for USB storage devices, again, just like the FIO. But the Eversolo's party trick is if you turn it upside down and flip open the, the panel on the bottom, we can insert an NVMe SSD drive, which is pretty cool. But because neither the FIO nor the Eversolo are Rune servers, it forces us back over to using UPnP, which I just don't do because I don't really enjoy using the UPnP implementations in anybody's app really for that matter, let alone, I'm looking at it over here, let alone Eversolos or Theos. But you might feel differently. And if you are a staunch UPnP user, please feel free to let us know in the comments below. A more significant difference between these two streaming DACs relates to their software. So if we look at the FIO, we can see that it's running Android 10, but it's more or less a native version of Android 10, just as we would find on a smartphone. So the Android operating system on the FIO kind of behaves as it does on a smartphone. But the Eversolo doesn't work that way. It's using Android 11, but it's heavily customized and it doesn't work like a smartphone. Well, not entirely, because the Eversolo gives us fewer native sort of inbuilt streaming options than the FIO, because the FIO allows us access to the Google Play Store and the Eversolo does not. And that Google Play Store on the FIO pretty much allows us to install any streaming app on the planet. Whereas if we look at the Eversolo, we just have to look at their whitelist. We can only install what's on the Eversolo's whitelist. So on the FIO, for example, we can install Apple Music Classical. We can install SoundCloud. We can install PlexAmp. And none of these will yet go on to the Eversolo. But thankfully, the developers at Eversolo have already whitelisted Apple Music, which is, I guess, fast becoming my favorite lossless streaming service. And yes, the DMP A6 streams high-res content from Apple Music, and it does it bit perfectly, because the engineers, a bit like the FIO engineers, have found a way to bypass Android's sample rate conversion. But we just have to remember to enable high-res lossless 
in the Apple Music's settings panel. And I know I didn't make much of a meal about this in my R7 video, but yes, the Apple Music running on the R7 also does high res lossless and bit perfectly. And yeah, both of them are gapless as well, in case you want to know. Normally, if I don't mention gapless playback, you can assume that it is present. However, in using Apple Music over the course of the past, what, three or four weeks on both of these devices, I think quite clearly that the Fio's portrait orientation of the screen is better suited to the way that the Apple Music app was designed because obviously it was designed for smartphones. So a streamer whose screen orientation matches that of a smartphone is obviously gonna give you a more smartphone-like experience. Whereas Apple Music running on the Evo Solo kind of stretched over its widescreen can look a little bit odd because there's lots of, I won't say empty space in the middle, but there's lots of almost close to being dead space in the middle. It's ultra wide, it's weird. And that's especially noticeable when using Android's on-screen keyboard because on the Fio, it's just like it is on a phone, but on the Ever Solo, it's stretched out like this. But nothing about the Ever Solo's UX is what we would call sluggish, not at all. Neither is the Fio's for that matter, so you don't have to worry about that at this stage. However, one of the Ever Solo's key advantages over the Fio is something pretty cool actually. It's called Cast Mode, which effectively allows the smartphone app to remote desktop into the Ever Solo unit. And you would think there would be some kind of lag there, but there really isn't. I'm not saying it's exactly real time, but it's as close as damn it to it. And we need that if we wanna manage Apple Music streams from the comfort of our listening chair. So we don't have to get out of our seat to change the music with Apple Music on the Ever Solo as we do with the Fio, because there's no cast mode with the Fio. There's no remote access to the Fio's Android desktop, Android desktop, I know you can do it with their, their own sort of music playback app, but it doesn't relate to any of the sort of more normal streaming services. So yeah, with the Fio, we have to put some legwork in and the cast app on the Ever Solo, I think is really, really cool. And it also allows us to pretty much do anything that we would normally do if we were directly in front of the Ever Solo screen pressing on it. So we can change its VU meter display. I think there are four options. Now, I know this might sound a little bit churlish. I'm not a big fan of their design. I think they look a bit plain, but if you disagree, then please let us know in the comments below. And I think it's also worth pointing out that the Fio doesn't have any VU meter display. So I guess it's better to have some than none for some people like me. I do love a good VU meter display, but yeah, I don't know. I don't find a lot of sort of aesthetic satisfaction from looking at those designed by Ever Solo, but I guess they could change them if they wanted to with a software update down the line. Of course, there is one obvious downside to using Ever Solo's cast mode. In that, we have to turn our phone sideways. And like Fio, Ever Solo do sell an infrared remote control for the DMP A6. I tried to buy one because it's only like 13 bucks or 15 bucks but they were sold out all across Europe, so I just couldn't get one. Now we come to the all important sound quality differences. Now I made sure that on both units, I had bit perfect playback mode enabled all of the time. And I mainly used Rune Ready, Tidal Connect, and then I connected a shit erd CD transport to each unit's coaxial input. And even though I've been listening to these two units side by side for the last four weeks, I gotta say that the differences were pretty easy to discern. So what I heard on day one and two is still what I hear now. In that, the Ever Solo is more tantalizing in its sound. It's more likely to kind of get you to sit up and pay attention, especially in a quick fire A-B test at say a store demo or at a friend's house or wherever. And on Bowie's Scary Monsters, it quite clearly sounded better extended in the top end than the Fio. But it could also be described as brighter 
than the Theo. Not necessarily in a negative way. I know that word comes loaded with negative connotations. I don't mean it necessarily that way. But if, like me, you're a fan of fairly weak sounding 90s recordings like Pulp's Deep Fried in Kelvin, an amazing B-side. If you're a fan of that kind of thing, then you might lean towards the Theo's, I guess, more generous take on that kind of music. Because that kind of music can sound a little bit harder at the hands of the DMP A6. And it's also clear to me that the Ever Solo has an ever so slightly, ever so slightly wider soundstage than the Theo but we're only talking like a matter of visual inches. And listening to Talking Heads is Stop Making Sense, well specifically the track Cities, which is about to be part of the remaster that's coming out soon. I would say that the Ever Solo is very much front seat, right? It's like right there in front of you, it's like ah. Whereas the Fio is probably about 10 rows back. It's a little bit more subdued in the top end. And the R7's darker tonality is neatly exposed by a track like Brian Eno's Two Forms of Anger. But with the upside that it's easier to listen to for longer periods. And no, the Fio is no less detailed than the Ever Solo. The Ever Solo is just more upfront with that detail delivery. Is there a clear best here? No, I don't think so. If I had to choose one on sound quality alone, I'd probably just about go with the Ever Solo, but not with the speakers that you see behind me because I think these Bowers & Wilkins 705S3, they definitely lean towards the sort of brighter end of the spectrum in the treble and combining that with a similar gestalt from the Ever Solo, I don't think it's a good combination. I would be looking to put the Ever Solo into a system where the loudspeakers are possibly a little bit more subdued in the top end, a bit like the Wharfdale Linton. But if I had loudspeakers, which I do actually, that are already lively up top, or if my amplifier was also lively up top, I would definitely be sticking with the Fio R7. But as usual, the sound quality differences here are, they're there, but they're not night and day. No one's getting blown out of the water. And I would advise you, because of that, to choose your fighter based primarily on its functionality and what it does and how it looks and how it behaves before you consider sound quality. That's my advice. You don't have to take it, obviously. It's just, this is how I feel about this particular market segment with streaming DAX, which is why I made a big deal about the functional differences and similarities between the Fio and the Ever Solo in the first two thirds of this video. And that also goes for the Blue Sound Node X, which I think is possibly closer in terms of sonic personality to the Ever Solo. Or maybe it's somewhere like halfway between the Fio and the Ever Solo. But the Blue Sound, unlike the Ever Solo, adds a very decent sounding headphone amplifier to the mix. But alas, does not come with a touchscreen on the front. Yes, there's a touch sensitive plate on the top, but it's not really the same thing. And there's no balanced XLR connectivity from the Blue Sound, which for me in this particular listening environment means that I can't put the Blue Sound over here as I can with the Fio and the Ever Solo with my hi-fi system over there. What about the DMP A6 Master Edition? Now, as far as I'm aware, this is only being sold through bricks and mortar retail outlets, but I don't have one. So I can't tell you how it compares to the base model. So I've got no idea how it's better clocking and better output stage for I think an extra 200-ish bucks. I can't tell you what that gives you over and above the standard model that I have here. Just as I thought I was out, this review pulled me back in again because I looked at the price differential between the Fio and the Ever Solo and thought, hang on a minute, with that 160 euro shortfall, I can buy the optional linear power supply for the Fio. So that's exactly what I did. I bought a PL50, 
which is a linear power supply for the FIO, which allows us to bypass the internal power supply. And the improvements that this power supply brings to the FIO, once again, not night and day, doesn't blow the switch mode power supply out of the water. But the, the improvements are very real. They take a lot of the fizz out of the hi-hats on Humanoid's recent EP. They smooth off some of the edgy guitars heard from the Rakes and the Wombats, but without taking any of the urgency out of those tracks. And I think what I really like about what this FIO power supply does is that it extends the top end and then sort of relaxes the whole scene. So if you ask me now, is there a best between the Ever Solo and the FIO, purely in terms of sound quality, I would say the FIO. However, the Ever Solo is still for people who do like a keener top end, a more energized top end, or for people who want an MVME SSD drive bay in the bottom of their streamer so they can run it as a server streamer, or for people who really do, really, really, really do want VU meters on the front display of their touchscreen streaming DAC. But what this review really did for me was underline the importance of comparisons. And not only comparisons, I'm not talking about comparisons from audio memory about things I reviewed like three weeks ago or three months ago. I'm talking about side-by-side -side comparisons. Gear that I still have here that I can listen to this thing for a few days and then this thing for a few days and then go back again. Because the differences between the Ever Solo and the Fio, you wouldn't be able to pick them from audio memory, not at all. And had I heard the Ever Solo in isolation, I might have gone, yeah, this is the best sounding streamer available below a grand, right? I might have done that. But because I've also got the Node X here and I've got the FIO here, now with the optional power supply, the linear power supply, I've got a different set of comparators to provide proper context to the Ever Solo's value proposition. It is incredible, it really is, I think it's fantastic. And if you're somebody who's tantalized by touchscreens on the front of their streamers, I'm not really, I think it's kind of cool, but I'm not like, oh wow, that's amazing. So maybe I am not the target market for these kinds of products. Maybe I'm not, I don't know. But it's really important that we don't lose, <laughs> I guess lose sight of other things that are available for the same money because for the same money as the Ever Solo, we can buy the Node X or we can buy the FIO with the linear power supply. And those tell us that the Ever Solo really isn't, <laughs> I hate to say it, it isn't the best sounding or the best even network streamer that you can buy for less than a grand. I mean, I don't think any of them really qualify as out and out best. I don't think any of them are a step ahead of the others. Maybe the FIO in a pinch, but I'm really talking about I guess my own personal tastes in audio, because I really like the sort of, I guess the dynamic elasticity that the FIO with the power supply gives me. And what I mean by that is when a tennis ball hits a wall, it doesn't bounce back rigidly, as we would see in the 70s console game Pong, because that's, you know, like it goes eh, eh, like that, doesn't it? That's how a bounce happens in that game. No, when a tennis ball hits a wall, it kind of sort of collapses a little bit slowly and then springs back. And I think the FIO with the power supply gives us that. And unfortunately, I hate to say it, the Ever Solo does not. And neither really does the Blue Sound for that matter. Now, maybe the Masters Edition will be better in that regard. I don't know. But then again, we're, we're no longer in or no longer on equal footing because the Masters Edition of the Ever Solo sells for over, I think it's is it 1200 euros, something like that. And then you might say, well, okay, what if I add a linear power supply to the Blue Sound? Well, again, I don't know because I can't do that because I don't have one. So I guess we could go round and round with ifs and buts and maybes and whatabouts forever. But I have reviewed three streaming DACs that sell for less than a grand in the last three months. And I've covered them all with side-by-side -side comparisons. So I hope you appreciate that. If you dig this latest and final, final video in this series, then please consider giving us a like down below. God, I'm losing my voice. If you like my attitude towards, yeah, basically side-by-side -side comparisons in hi-fi review videos, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. Did I miss something in this video that you want to know about? Yes, more than likely I did, because there is a lot to talk about with this kind of product. However, 
John Grandberg, who writes for my website, Darko Audio, will be doing a written review of the Eversolo DMP A6, and I believe he's going to go into more detail on the Eversolo unit as a digital transport. So I'll post that review on the community pages of this channel when it goes live. So you'll need to be subscribed to this channel to see that notification. Hello, me again. You're watching this video on YouTube. If you are watching it over on Patreon, you'd be watching a longer version with bloopers and outtakes. And in this particular video about the Ever Solo, I'm going to include some extra B-roll sequences that show in more detail some of the menu options on the unit and how they kind of display also in cast mode on the app. So I will hope you'll consider supporting me on Patreon even if it's just for a month, just to buy me a cup of coffee. Thank you very much.